Now we're back to JavaScript on Xism. This time I'm going to show you how to solve regular chatbot. It deals with regular expressions. If this is a new concept, read through this carefully. We need a couple of flags, G and I for case sensitivity and global search. But I'm going to go over this as I solve these exercises. Let's dive right in with task one. So we want to check if command is valid or not. And it's only valid when chatbot is at the start of the command. And if it's not, for example, here, hey, chatbot, this is invalid. And upper and lower case doesn't matter. So if it's chatbot with a capital C or a lowercase c doesn't matter, for example, We create a new constant, which is going to be our regex. I will directly test our command with it. So the command is our string. And now we'll have to define our regex. You need these slashes. And inside, you place what you want. In our case, we need the i. So this is the flag for case sensitivity. And if you add it, it's ignored. So it doesn't matter if it's lowercase or uppercase. And then we need the specific word chatbot. So I'll just copy paste this here. Let me make it lowercase c. And it has to be at the start. So not just part of the string. So we need this curry. Sign it's at the top left of your keyboard. And now we have to find our regex as chatbot at the start of the string without any case sensitivity. And this works. So test one and two, we've passed that now. Let's move on to task two, remove encrypted emojis. So another string is given, it's called message, and part of the message is an emoji, which is always written the same way, but it has a different number. So it's emoji and then a couple of numbers. The approach is somewhat of the same. We'll just check our message, and then we want to replace the emoji, and we'll just leave it empty, I believe. You can see that in the example. So we use the word emoji and then a bunch of numbers. And for regular expressions, numbers are indicated with backslash d. So I need the square brackets backslash d, but it's multiple numbers. So don't forget to add the plus sign. Otherwise you would have only one number. So backslash d would be only one number with a plus sign. It can be multiple numbers. And I have to add the slashes before and after. And I don't believe that we need any flags, so G or I. And let me add them anyway. So maybe emoji is written with uppercase and there are multiple emojis in a message. So I'll add them. And I want to replace them, as I've said, with nothing. So just add quotation marks afterwards. And now we should already be good. And you can see in test four, we have more than one emoji, so the flags are actually needed. So add G and I. Can move on to task three, check valid phone number. So there's a specific phone number format given right here. And this is the only valid format. Everything else is going to be rejected. So 
when the first example is valid, second example is invalid. I once again define a regex, and then we've got two cases for valid and invalid. Valid is this text, so thanks, you can now download me to your phone. And invalid is this text. But be careful here, the number is part of our invalid message. So let me delete this and replace it with our variable. And finally, we want to test our number when it comes to regex. And we've got two cases. If it's valid, we return the valid message. And if it's invalid, we return the invalid message plus the number. Let me check if I made typos. It doesn't look like I have. So now let's take care of the regex. At first I add the slashes. We don't really need a flag here for now. Let us check, we've got two numbers right here. So we need backslash D. And we know the specific number, so we don't use a plus sign. Instead we use these curly brackets and add two. So these would be the first two numbers in our valid format. Then we've got three numbers. So let me add that backslash D, curly brackets three. And we've got that three times. So I can copy paste it two times. Now let's take care of the other positions. At first, before our two numbers, we've got a plus sign. So we need backslash plus. And you can also see the brackets. So these regular brackets. So we need backslash opening bracket right here. And after the D2, we need a backslash closing bracket. Afterwards, we've got a white space. So I can leave that right here. Then we've got backslash D three numbers. We can leave that. And then we've got a minus sign. And there is no white space. So I need to add minus and delete the white space. After three numbers, we've got minus again, no white space, and then three numbers yet again. And this should be our valid number format. I'll check it. And that looks good. So here we've got a wrong number format. We've got our invalid message and the number is returned as this case is now true. And here we have a valid number format in test five. So the valid message is returned. And we're good to proceed to get website link. So task four. We check a user input and we're going to extract a URL from it. User input is always the string. So let me define regex yet again. And we're going to use the user input and then use match to find our regex in it. So we always have a combination of words, a combination of letters, I'm sorry, then a dot, and then again, a combination of letters. So let me use the slashes, then backslash W, which is for a single letter. And I add the plus sign because we don't know how many letters we're going to have. Afterwards, we need backslash dot. And then again, we need backslash W and plus, because it could be dot com, it could be dot DE. So we don't know how many letters.
Don't forget to add the G flag. Because in our user input there could be multiple websites. Let me check test 7. Here we've got youtube.com, so this is found. Everything's fine. And here in test 8 we've got multiple websites in our input. So this is why we need the G flag. Both are found, so everything's good here. Let us go to task 5, the final one, greet the user. So full name is given, and it's always given in the same format. So last name first, then comma, white space, and then first name. Is on the right hand side, Smith, comma, John. And we want to return nice to meet you, and then first name, last name. We have to inverse it a little bit. And I've simply done so by using a split. So I use the full name, which is given in this format. And then last name, first name. You can see that once again on the right hand side, last name is given first. So this would be Smith. And then first name is given last, which would be John. I don't want to split it where the comma and the white space is. So we need quotation marks, comma, and then don't forget the white space. So this is also needed. And now we can return our message using our two variables. So we need a nice to meet you. But not John Smith. Instead we need plus first name. then plus white space, and then plus last name, and then plus dot. And let me read it carefully. We don't need a dot, so I can delete this last part, but this should be fine. Let me check it. And we've passed the last test, so this was the solution for regular chatbot using JavaScript on Exit. I hope this video was helpful, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.